Now, the story gets more complicated, as you know from your reading. If I plot separation, the distance between the atoms, as I bring these atoms together, I start to form molecular orbitals. The degree to which they overlap determines how much energy benefit I get from a bonding orbital, right? The closer I make them, the more energy I get from making a bonding orbital. So what happens is out here, let's say I'm, as I start to get them closer and closer, I start to get a band that as I bring the atoms closer and closer, the band gets larger and larger. Same number of states, but it, it occupies an energy range. I should have said energy over here. That's larger and larger. And the same for the 3P. And I think you can see what's going to happen is that the band for the 3P will ultimately, I'm really messing up my drawing, will ultimately overlap with the band for the 3S. So in other words, when I use my example beryllium, you can see what happens is that normally if you just thought if you just thought uh, of the 3S band or the 2S band, you would um, just believe that you would fill a band so there would no longer be a metal. But of course, what really happens is that there are unoccupied orbitals right at the top of the 3S band. Right? And they happen to be the three orbitals that were created by the 3P. Now, the other thing that happens as, the, as you get closer and closer is that the, the phenomenon that you studied uh, for the exam is that happens, and that's called hybridization, right? As the orbitals of S and P get closer in energy, they mix. And so instead of thinking of making my molecular orbitals in this entire crystal out of S and P orbitals, at some point, I start to make them out of what? Hybridization, hybridized S and P orbitals. So like if I, have, if I have a tetrahedral crystal structure, it'll be hybrids of SP3 orbitals. And at that point, you now have an, an, bonding and anti-bonding bands for hybrid orbitals. So this is going to be called bonding, or we'll say valence. and conduction. And so this is essentially, so these are bands here. And there's a gap that appears between the bonding and anti-bonding, just like you had in simple molecules. And we call that the gap, the band gap. Gap. So just to put, put a, uh, numbers on these, sodium is about here with a 0 0.372. And silicon is about here. It's a 0 0.222. These are nanometers. 